Hi, my name is Hunter Freeman and I am working on a text editor that is written using Fluxer and Blazor. I aspire for it to be an IDE and I think it would be interesting to do a Fluxer tutorial from within the text editor that is written using Fluxer. So that's what I will do right now. If you want to see the source code for the text editor, it is open source, cross-platform, and I'll put a link in the description of this video. I'm currently on Ubuntu, uh, so Linux. So let's do it. I am currently in Rider, so I'll click Run and I want to start up the Fotino application so I can run this application natively on my operating system. You see I get the window and it shows up down here, right? Minimize it, bring it back up. So I can full screen this. In addition to that, I will change the font size to make sure that it's uh, better viewable in the video, right? And you can move these around, uh, resize them at all the angles and maximize and stuff. So we'll put it up to 20. Uh, that should look good for the video. The font size that is to, to, to uh, 20 pixels. I need to go to file, make a new solution I'll call this Fluxer in Fluxer app, uh, Fluxer in Fluxer. I can then scroll down in my input file dialog and I will put it in repos for me. You hit enter to select it or you can right click and use the context menu to set your selection. You see here the command that will be ran. It's .NET new SLN with a uh, option to give it a name. We see in the terminal the output that it was successfully created immediately. Uh, the folder explorer is open for you as well the solution is set. I'm going to uh, decrease the height of the folder explorer because it's not that important right now. One interesting little tidbit is you can move around uh, entirely with just the keyboard. So if you look up here, there's the focus and it starts with the innermost focus and then it goes all the way out to the outermost focus, which would be global. And if you hit a key bind, it tries to match the key bind within the closest ancestor of focus, like context. And if it doesn't find a key bind, it continually bubbles up. And once it does find a key bind, it does the opposite of HTML and stops propagating uh, immediately. Whereas with HTML, you would have to call stop propagation yourself. Alt S goes to the Solution Explorer, Alt G goes to Global, E for Editor, R for Run in the Terminal, T for Toolbar, F for Folder Explorer. Uh, you can see these tabs down here. You can swap between them. I want to go to the NuGet Package Manager, so I hit Alt N and it swaps to that tab. Uh, there's also a taskbar thing here. It's a little uh, peculiar looking right now. So, I can create a new C-sharp project. I want a Blazor server app. So I hit enter, and you see it down here as well. I'm going to put it in the same folder as the solution that I just made. So Fluxer in Fluxer, right click, set the selection, I had the solution name copied to my clipboard and I'll call this server. 
hit tab one too many times. And you see it automatically will uh, add that to the solution and then update the tree view very quickly. I will add the class library and the Razor class library. So repos, fluxer and fluxer dot class lib. And lastly, I will add a Razor class library. It's my keyboard here. Uh, repos, fluxer and fluxer, context menu, paste, and make a Razor class library. The Razor class library needs a project reference to the server. So I can right click the Razor uh, library and use the context menu option for start, add project reference. It then brings up the input file dialog, but you see down here, it wants me to choose a C sharp project specifically. So I can go back down to my repos and then go over to Fluxer and Fluxer. Uh, this is the Razor lib, and it wants a reference to the class library. Click on the C Sharp project, and then confirm. You can see down here in the terminal that was added. And if I double click on Razor lib, uh, here it is. Uh, you see I'm selecting the text the text selection is a little buggy, but it worked that time. And we'll pretend that it works every time after that. Uh, <laughs> so close this tab. In addition to that, the class library needs a project reference to the Razor library. So I go to Fluxer and Fluxer. Uh, I'm currently at the class library trying to add a reference to the Razor library. I click on the CS proj and then the button is no longer disabled. And there you go. I need to add a NuGet package reference to Fluxer for my class library where I will have the store. So. I click on NuGet packages in the context menu options. It takes me to the NuGet package manager. I can pull this up a little bit. And here we see the active solution. Include pre-release, right? It says at the end of, it shows you the interpolated uh, query that you're going to uh, request. So I can click this change to true and then false, true, false, right? And as I type in here, I type fluxer. Here it is, Q equals fluxer. I hit enter. Uh, this is not the correct project. I want to add this to the class library. I can then uh, context menu on fluxer. And real quick, I'll open it. Uh, we see all the information here and all the versions are here and the author, Peter Morse. <laughs> uh, and then let me do that again. I did that kind of quickly. Uh, you right click the NuGet package that you want to reference. There's an add reference context menu option. And then this is a little weird. Uh, UI wise because there's so many versions that it goes off the screen but you get a sub menu in your context menu that you can pick the version you want I should clean up the UI for that it's kind of weird I click 5.4.0 let's see 
generate. See that again. Uh, Fluxer. I want to add to the class library. My razor has a reference to the class lib. My class lib has a reference to the razor. And my server does not have a reference to the razor. So I seemingly uh, absently minded. added the razor reference to the class library, creating a circular reference as we can see in the terminal, uh, specifically right here. So just remove it, control S to save the file, uh, and then fix that up real quick. I wanted to add it to the server. I'm gonna pay attention this time. Uh, let's see, repos. And I want to go to Fluxer and Fluxer. And I want to add the Razor library. Confirm. Go to the server. And there it is. All right, cool. Next, go back to the NuGet package manager. I type Fluxer. I hit enter. It gets those NuGet packages results from my query, which is showcased here, what will be sent. I pick my class lib, Fluxer, add reference 5.4.0. There it is. And there it is, uh, right here. I can go to my class lib and make a new templated file for service collection extensions.cs and open this file alt e to go to the editor and then tab a few times this will be static and that spacing looks weird uh now it's fine public uh, I'm adding extension methods to add my services. Uh, I'll say that. Because, all right, uh, iServices, iService collection. And then I want to add Fluxer in Fluxer class lib services. I can then say uh, it takes this because it's an extension method and then iService collection and then services. I then want to have fluent API. So I return services dot add Fluxer and Fluxer gives you an action so that you can uh, customize your setup. And so I'll say options goes to What is happening? <laughs> okay, I have to pause the video because hitting the enter key is a key bind for the recording software. <laughs> so I'll be right back. All right, is this thing going? <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Let's see if I can type the equal sign. I can. It was a key bind for the recording software. So sorry about that. Options goes to options dot scan assemblies. And it would be the type of service collection extensions dot assembly. I then use control S to save the file. And I can close out of this one. 
in the Razor library, I need to add a NuGet package reference to fluxer.blazer. And it's set to the Razor lib, fluxer.blazer.web, add reference 5.4. And then once again, service collection extensions.cs. Open this up. We're going to have the website reference the Razor library services and the Razor library services references the class library services. So it chains. So static, uh, public, static, i service collection, add fluxer in fluxer razor lib services. This i service collection services return services dot add fluxer in fluxer class lib services add the using statement for the class library referencing that and as well uh, I saved this file I'll close it I need to add a reference to Fluxer, uh, a using statement for the class library services. I forgot to do that. All right. I'm going to add a Fluxer in Fluxer Razor Lib Initializer. Initializer dot razor so I'm making a blazer component it prompts me if I want a code behind it's set to true by default and then I hit accept so here we see the dot cs file and here we see the dot razor file I'll show you real quick uh, it templated out the partial component base and such of that nature. I uh, don't really want any of that. I need to add from my notes uh, Fluxer wants a fluxer.blazer.web.store initializer. Fluxer.blazer.web.store initializer. And I don't need a using statement. I fully qualified it. Did I save that? Yeah, I did. This allows me to not have a reference to Fluxer in my host for the application, which happens to be server-side Blazor. Uh, I like doing this because then you can just have swapping out hosts left and right and not really worry about the host. So I go to shared. I will add a reference to that component that I just made, which was fluxer in fluxer dot razor lib dot fluxer in fluxer dot nope. Razor lib initializer. All right. Fully qualified it. Looks good. In program.cs of the server side host, I need to reference the method. I need to call it to add the Razor library services. So here we have the builder logic. So I'll do builder.services dot add uh, what did I call this thing add fluxer and fluxer research lib services fluxer in fluxer razor lib 
Razor Lib services. Add a using statement. Fluxer in Fluxer dot Razor Lib. I will then go to the class library and make a directory for uh, the store. So go in here, make a store directory, and then the counter case. Inside the counter case, I need counter state dot cs counter state is going to be a record that is a feature state at using just using not razor file using flexor it's going to have a positional uh, property, I think they call it, I'm blanking, of int count and a constructor for the initial state uh, will be public counter state, this, and I give it the value zero and that will initialize my count to zero when Fluxer creates the first version of this I added the feature state. The feature state attribute is how Fluxer finds uh, your states in the assembly. Uh, when I did this one right here, it scans this assembly. I see that highlighting is a little buggy. <laughs> All right. I also need someone that's going to alter the state. So that would be my counter state reducer. Uh, I think it's coming from the old English version of what reducer meant, which was to like input output uh, change something. I need a reducer method so that Fluxer can find it. I'll add the using Fluxer. It has to be public, the method, and then public static. It's going to return a counter state because the reducer takes in the current counter state and puts out the next counter state. And the idea is that all of this is immutable and that the reducer is synchronous. So you go after you dispatch, you don't reach the next line of code until after the reduction occurred, which is incredibly powerful. Uh, and then if you use an effect, uh, you lose that. So it's like very nice to have this reducer thing. Because it's synchronous. And I'm going to reduce increment counter state action this will take as a parameter the previous counter state like I said and it will take in as a parameter I'll type it like this for a second uh, increment counter state action let's just call it action to speed up the process but you can pass in your actions to the method itself uh, if you want to access data on the action to influence the change that occurs maybe you want to increment 
by some varying amount and that incrementation amount is stored on the action dot increment by and then you would add increment by instead of adding one but I will just add one and for that reasoning there's no actual data on my action so what I can do is use the constructor for this attribute and give it the type of the action and that reduces the amount of warnings that your uh, development environment might uh, give you because it's going to say the variable is not being used so uh, and then I will return uh, the previous counter state but with a change so I'll do with count equal to previous counter state dot count plus one and like I said you could pass in the parameter of the action that's another parameter here and then you could do an increment by amount if you wanted I am only modifying uh, one property which is every property so you could do a new but I think it's a bad idea just because it tends to be the case if you use new you might forget to later on when you add a second property change it to a with because with will copy all the other properties that you don't specify I specified all of them so my IDE will give me a warning but for safety of the future not to forget to use with because you probably will want to do that in the future right I need to make this uh, action so we'll do that uh, increment counter state action dot uh, CS One thing I realize, uh, I remember, uh, I don't currently add the namespace uh, in regards to the folder structure. It's just the project. That's something I plan on doing. So let me just fix that. Uh, it's not accounting for the folder structure. Dot store dot counter case dot store dot counter case and dot store dot counter case all right i'll make this guy a, a uh, record and there's nothing associated with it in regards to data so i'll just put a semicolon uh off, th off the top of my head i don't know if you can get rid of these parentheses so i'll just leave them uh It'll just be a warning saying that they don't need to be there. Let me make sure I added a reference to Fluxer in both of these reducer and the state. Cause it's reducer method and the feature state. So good. And increment. All right. Let me check the time. All right, we're at 30 minutes. I'm just trying to be mindful of your time. Uh, so I'll try to get this done. I can go to my raise your lib, make a new directory for the counter case. Hit accept. This would be uh, counter display dot razor. Once again, it prompts me for the code behind. I say yes. It gave me a template for a Blazor component code behind. I need to use a Fluxer component. Uh, inherit that instead of the Blazor component. 
component base, I think is what the Blazor one's called. And let me just double check my notes and make sure that this is the correct thing. Yep. And if you change what you're inheriting in the code behind, you have to inherit it in the markup. So I will do that. At inherits and fluxer dot blazer dot web dot components. I'm just laughing because I wish I could copy from outside of the program. Uh, this is a fine namespace, right? Uh, it's just that I wish I could copy it. I can only copy things within uh, the program itself because I can't figure out how to access the clipboard within a Fotino application. Uh, but I need to spend more time looking into that, right? I just haven't found much time to look into it. It wasn't immediately obvious to me. Um, so that's all. I'm sure it's possible. Uh, I can add this using statement to this guy now. Uh, fluxer dot blazer dot web dot components all right Let me try to save that both files and now we just do an injection dependency injection private i state and I think I need to add the using fluxer For the I state part, I'm not sure though. Uh, and this will be, I want to inject the counter state. And this will be the counter state wrap. Get set equals null not. Also got to inject private I dispatcher. Dispatcher get set null not private void we're going to dispatch increment counter state on click allow the word action dispatcher dot dispatch new increment counter state action and there's no data you could pass in I want to increment by five if you wanted to if you added that logic if I'm gonna reference the action here make a new instance of it I need a using statement fluxer in fluxer dot class lib. Uh, I think it's also dot store dot counter case. That's what I did. Okay. I now need to go to the markup. Delete all that. Put a div. Uh, whoops. And we'll do style equals cursor pointer just to get this going at on click equals dispatch increment counter action on click and count a uh, non breaking space and at counter state wrap dot value to get the inner value, right? Because it's an I state. It's not actually the state itself. It's wrapping it. And then dot count. 
So. Okay. I'm gonna make sure this is saved. And I can add a using statement. First I gotta fix the namespace. Uh, like I said, it does not account for directories. Yeah. Okay. Go to the class lib. Go to index.razor. And go to the bottom. Uh, first, I'll add the using statement at using fluxer in fluxer dot razor lib dot counter case. And then counter display. Counter display. Counter display. That should be good. I right click the server, set it as the startup project, and then I click play up here. It's the screen button. It shows the MS build that I'm gonna use and such of that nature. Let's see if this works. Okay, I need a semicolon. And it's counter state reducer line 13. Make sure I save this index page. Nine thirteen. There it is. Boom. Try it again. Type your namespace. I service collection could not be found. That is in the class lib. So I will go to class lib. New get packages. Microsoft dependency injection hit the enter key change it to class lib so I add it to that project and I want this one add reference 6.0.0 .0. there we go I then need to say a using statement Soft dot extend extensions dependency injection. All right. Oh, the razor lib. Okay. Let's see that. Microsoft.extensions.dependency injection. And like I said, the copying and pasting is, and like the highlight, highlighting of text is like buggy. Like, uh, what is happening right now? <laughs> but, right. It's a little weird. Uh, I gotta fix it up. That's why I didn't copy and paste it. Uh, I gotta work on that. It's a, just a buggy. Okay. Service collection cannot be found. I added the using statement. Give it a run. Does not exist. Line four of the dot razor. <laughs> I think it's missing the word state. I gotta get some uh, IntelliSense on like autocomplete. This is <laughs> but this is progress, in work in progress. All right, so let's see. I don't have this, it's not gonna work, so let's see. 
what is the issue here? It says that it couldn't found it, couldn't find it. <laughs> okay. Fluxer in Fluxer. Dot Razor Lib. Fluxer. In Fluxer. Razor Lib. Initializer. Hmm. Let me put the using statement up here. I think I typed it wrong, but I'm never going to be able to find the typo unless I just retype it. I'll sit there forever looking at it. It's fluxer in fluxer. Dot razor lib, not in counter case. Stop the program, run it again. Let me see how long this is going. I'm going to pause it and figure out why this is happening so I don't waste your time. Uh, and then I'll let you know what was wrong. So let's see. Okay. Let's see if this is recording. It seems to be recording. Let me check the time and see if it's going up. But I found the problem. Uh, the timer is going up, so it's recording. OK. I spelled it wrong. It says fluxer in fluxer razor lib initializer. Right? There's like a T out of nowhere. So I'm just going to put the T there. Uh, but yeah, it's filled wrong. <laughs> in tishalizer is what I typed. Because you can't rename a file yet. You can only delete it and then I have to remake it and then I don't want to waste any time. So just add the T. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, copy link location. I can't open this link by clicking on it. Uh, I got to figure out how to do that in Fotino because Fotino is a web view and uh, it just acts weird because of the web view. It like sometimes opens it up in Fotino itself, like this application. Uh, so I'm gonna copy the link. I, ne I needed to open it in an external browser, right? So I gotta figure that one out, but here we go. Zoom in. And they all go up. <laughs> all right. Goodbye. That's the end of the video. Thank you.